Well, good morning and welcome back to Log Cabin Firewood. I am Jack, and today we're going to be talking about things that I forget all the time and something that's helped me remember things when I go out to gather wood, cut wood, process wood, whatever you want to call it. Stick around. So I'm sure we've all been there before where we went somewhere with intentions of getting a lot of stuff done, but we forgot one important thing that we needed. For instance, maybe I'm going out to cut some wood and I forgot my perfect stick because you know, I love to have perfect 16 inch wood and I rely on that tool. So I've come up with a checklist that I can put on my phone and it's a free app. It's actually called shopping list and it does have ads but whatever once that ad's gone uh, you can put anything in there and you can put all kinds of stuff so i'm going to show you how i go through and go through my checklist before i go away when i'm not splitting here at the house or cutting here at the house so that i don't forget things because i forget stuff all the time so this app is called shopping list it is in the google play store I'm sure you can get something very similar on an iPhone. I, you can see here, I've got firewood pre-trip already in here, and I've got some items selected in here that I can go through and I can put in the truck and I can check off. And one of the most important things is bar oil. <laughs> Believe it or not, I have left the house before without gas or bar oil, just because I simply forgot to grab my milk crate. But another important thing is your PPE. You know, your glasses, your gloves, your chaps, my 3M work tunes because I love jamming music or listening to podcasts while I'm working. Another very important thing is the trauma kit. I keep one of these in my truck at all times. This is the Rhino Rescue Bleeding Control Kit because a first aid kit typically isn't going to help you if you have an incident with a chainsaw. Most times, chainsaw is incidents are going to be pretty severe. So you're going to need stuff to stop bleeding. This has a yard of hemostatic gauze. It's got six inch emergency bandage. It's got a metal tourniquet, gauze, an emergency blanket, bandage scissors, gloves, and an instruction card. This has pretty much anything and everything in it that you would need if something catastrophic happens to you in the field and you're by yourself. And this is always in the same place in my truck. And my truck is normally within, you know, 20 yards of where I'm working. I try to get my truck as close as possible, but I can also throw this in a bag if I'm not working close to my truck. So now here's something that I uh, carry more than one of now. And that's the perfect stick. If you guys aren't familiar with the perfect stick, it is a magnet that will attach to your bar. This has a fiberglass rod on it with a plastic disc on the end that you attach to your bar and you can measure your wood to perfect 16 inch pieces every time. The reason I carry two is because if you accidentally cut this in half with your chainsaw, which can happen, you know, one is none, two is one. Uh, you could find these on Amazon or you can find them also on etsy if i remember i'll put a link in the description for these great products uh you know it's a local i believe it's a one-man operation and you know support a small business but we could go ahead back to our uh, checklist we can check off the trauma kit we could check off the perfect stick so next up on the list we've got my can hook this thing is so invaluable like it's probably the coolest piece of equipment that I have besides everything else I have but when you cut your lumber or you cut your wood throw this on the log and you can roll this over that way you don't have to put your tip in the dirt and this thing being you know almost as tall as me probably five foot tall it gives you tons of leverage and I believe this is yeah this is aluminum but it's it's super light it's got a super super sharp point and I believe Logrite makes these and Steel just rebrands them as their own. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that is uh, the case. It says it's made in the USA here. 
great tool to have. That's why it's on my checklist. So we could check off the cant hook. The next thing on my list is the Dremel and the steel bag. So they go hand in hand here. There's my steel bag. And inside here, I have a few items that I know I'm gonna use. There was an Oregon chain, brand new. I always, always carry an extra chain with me. Uh, and I use these stones because I use a Dremel. Uh, they're 730 seconds uh, for the 3 h chain. And this here, I just have a uh, cordless Dremel. Actually need to charge this battery. But since my truck has a electric port in the bed here, I also carry the corded one. And then... I keep a small wrench in here for my Dremel. I've got my West Coast saw raker gauge. I got my scrunch. I've got the grease for my bar, but I stopped doing it because there's no need. Uh, from everything that I've read, uh, there's enough bar oil that goes through that thing. You don't have to grease the tip. Whatever, it, you do what makes you happy. But then I've also got my file for adjusting my rakers. Uh, here lately, I've been lazy, and I have not been doing this. Every other sharpen, I've just been doing a pass or two across my rakers, and it seems to be working pretty well. Uh, but do that at your own risk. You can make your rakers very aggressive, and that'll make your saw bouncy and hard to hang on to. So we can go ahead and get rid of the Dremel, the steel bag, and now we've got the tool bag, which is different from the steel bag. And this is just a generalized tool bag. I've got my wrenches. I've got various sets of pliers, adjustable wrenches. I've got all kinds of stuff in here. I've even got the keys for working with gas bottles. Um, this is just, uh, I keep this in the truck at all times. There's all kinds of stuff in here. It's not all chainsaw related. It's just general stuff that I carry in case something happens. We'll go ahead and check that off. So these next three things, the microphone, which I have on my hat right now, the camera that I'm recording with, and the tripod that is holding the camera. Can't really show you all that because, well, I can show you the mic, but everything else is right in front of me. Uh, but without the tripod, I can't do things hands-free. Without the camera, I can't show you what I'm doing. And without this microphone, I can't provide you the best audio available. <laughs> Moving on, the log ox. So when I was talking about cool tools and some of my favorite stuff, I couldn't say that the uh, cant hook was my favorite thing because I love these as well. I love them so much that I bought two of them. And now I'm even got a few pictures of me on some of the log ox ads. Thank you, Austin. I was not expecting that, but it is cool to see me on my Facebook feed when I scroll through there sometimes. It's the little things in life that make you happy. But these are super handy tools, especially if you don't want to bend over. Uh, one of my viewers actually commented in two videos, two videos ago when we were getting that cherry and locust and Taryn and I were loading it up. The funny thing is I have these and I have another pair of the Amazon cheapies that were sitting in the garage that I had intended on bringing with me, which is why I'm making this video because I realized that I needed to make a checklist for myself so that I stopped forgetting things that make my life easier. And I'll tell you a funny story about not having these as well. So we can't really say that this was the primary cause of this because I do run a Case 821G front end loader that only has an air ride seat and I work for the railroad and I don't know if any of you have ran a big loader that has no suspension on it at all. There's solid axles all the way through with filled tires. I mean, this thing is a beast and you crawl over railroad all day long. I did this for two weeks straight. We were doing an install at one of the stations local to me and we had to do a bunch of running back and forth and it was a bumpy ride and I knew it was gonna happen. Uh, my back went out on me and it was doing the simplest thing. All I was doing was reaching over to put my hitch into the trailer, into the receiver. And I felt this little tiny boop and my back was down and out for 
almost two weeks. I'm just now feeling better. That was two weeks ago I hurt my back. So had I had the log oxes or even those Amazon cheapos, that might have uh, you know, helped me out to where my back wasn't in that, uh, I don't know how to say it. My back wouldn't have been in that situation to where when I was bending over and then getting beat up by my machine at work, that it wouldn't have went out. You know, I think those two things combined, me loading the trailer the way I did and splitting everything that I did and stacking, you know, I, I got a week back, you know. I'm supposed to have a, a weak mind and a strong back. Well, my, my back's not as good as it used to be and it's not getting any better. Another thing that happened at the end of my video last week, oh, I had a tick crawling on my arm. That was not the culprit. But two days later after that video, I was at work on a Sunday night and I felt a tick crawling up on me and he was in my, you know, my groin and I felt him. But I tried to find him, but it was the tiniest little thing. I didn't find him until two days later. He had actually bit me three times and then lodged himself in on the fourth and decided that was the place he liked. And I removed that. Um, and I really don't think it was from that tick. It may have been, but I don't think tick bites happen this fast. But I started feeling horrible on Monday night when I was at work. By the time I got home Tuesday morning, I told her I, d I wasn't feeling good. I was having some flu-like symptoms. It was a cough that came on like unexpectedly, really phlegmy cough, but it wasn't like a bronchitis -tile type cough. But I went to sleep on Tuesday morning and I didn't wake up until Thursday morning. And Taryn called or she shook me and woke me up and she said, look, and I was soaking wet. I was like, I had the cold chills. I was freezing, but I was like burning up, like just sweating. And Taryn said, I'm either calling the ambulance or I'm taking you to the hospital. So, you know, pick your poison. And we ended up going to the hospital. They ran some tests on me. They did the whole COVID, RSV, and flu test all in one. And then where they stick this thing this far down your brain and tickle your brain. Horrible experience. That stuff sucks. But then they... uh they asked me a bunch of questions, took my blood, did my tests, and then they, they said, you know, have you gotten bit by any ticks here recently? And I said, well, actually, and I'd still had the four bite marks on my thigh, my inner thigh, and I showed the doctor, and he was like, you have limes. He's like, it takes a little bit for this test to come back, but I'm pretty sure you've got limes. We're going to treat you with uh, doxycycline for the next 21 days. That stuff beats you up, man. That, the doxycycline makes me so sleepy. Yeah, so tired, like in the middle of the day, I just, I want to take a nap. I'm 41 years old, man. This stuff's beating me up already. So be careful with ticks. Definitely, uh, you know, wear your long pants and your long shirts. And if you're out in the fields and all that, go inside, take a shower, check each other for ticks. It can be fun too if you're an adult. Back to the video. But anyways... I wanted to say I'm sorry to a few of you that had reached out and asked me if I was going to Ohio Woodburners International Expo. Uh, I had fully intended on doing, doing that and going there. And Thursday when I went to the hospital, I had just a few hours to cancel my reservations for my room because I was gonna leave early Friday morning, go hang out all day with everybody, stay the night and then go there Saturday as well and stay the night and then drive home Sunday morning. You know, I had the whole weekend planned, you know, I said this year I wanted to do more events and unfortunately with what life threw at me, I was in no shape to drive six hours to Ohio by myself. Um, it just, it just didn't work out. So I, I wanted to say, I'm sorry. I did tell a few of you that I was going, that's why I wasn't there. Um, I'm, I'm a man of my word. <laughs> Most things that I say I'm going to do, I, I'm doing it. Um, but yeah, let's get back to this checklist. I think I have two more things on there and that's it. That's all I'm going to have. So the next thing up on the list is my mix gas. We can check that off. And what I'm currently using is the Echo Red Armor two-stroke oil. Um, I follow Iowa Performance Souls on Facebook. I believe that's what he is. Um, he does a lot of porting jobs on saws, and he talks a lot about how the other brand of oil that my saw happens to be 
is leaving such bad carbon deposits on the piston that uh, you know sometimes he's having to rebuild saws a lot quicker than he would if they were ported. You know, porting does wear out saws quicker, but you know when time is money, it does make them cut a lot faster as well. Uh, there's a few people that swear by Amsoil. It's great stuff, but you are going to pay for Amsoil. It's not cheap, and I'd I'd rather get something like this. You know, um, that I know that works, that people are supporting right now, that you know it's doing its job. And that's what I use. And last up on the list, we have the almighty steel 500i. We could check that off. This 500i was probably my best purchase ever. I was running an older 044 Magnum prior to purchasing this saw, and it was a night and day difference. Um, you know, clean your air filter regularly. Clean this thing regularly, period. Uh, there's plenty of tutorials and things on YouTube that there's a ton of little hiding spots around the electronic components in this thing where sawdust likes to get in there and jam up things that you can you know, prevent it, preventatively clean so that doesn't happen to you. But it's, uh, it's been a great saw. It runs fast, it cuts fast, and I recommend it to everybody. So that is my checklist that I now use to prevent myself from forgetting things and maybe hurting my back or, you know, having to run back home because I rely on things a lot. What else do you guys have on your checklist? Do you guys even use a checklist? Uh, is there anything else you could suggest for me to add to my checklist that I should be taking with me that I own, that I have, or maybe I could buy and show you? Let's talk about it. Um, I appreciate everybody. I've got a ton of new subscribers. Uh, we broke 1500 subs. Thank you each and every one of you. It's really cool. It's awesome that you guys come and check me out and listen to me rant about chainsaw and firewood related stuff. Um, make sure you guys come back next week. I have a really, really big surprise for you. Um, something that I've wanted for a really long time. is coming to Log Cabin Firewood. So I'll keep you in a little bit of suspense and you can uh, think about what I may be getting. But I think you guys will enjoy it and I'll be able to make a lot of cool content with it. But that is going to be it for today. I thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. It's also Memorial Day weekend. Don't be dumb. Call an Uber. You guys know what I mean. Uh, take care of each other. Take care of your friends. Take their keys and call an Uber for them or make them stay at your house. Please, please take care of each other. I'll see you back here next Saturday, 6.30 a.m. Thank you so much for watching.